Hi everyone, thank you so much for uh, joining today's live about social impact entrepreneurship. Uh, my, as you guys know, my name is Arza Youssef and I am a social impact entrepreneur of the indie beauty brand called Sexy Boss Babe. Uh, and a portion of our proceeds are donated to charities that support foster youth and sex trafficking survivors. Um, thank you guys for, for joining. So I come on here sometimes, uh, hopefully I'll be coming live more uh, to chat with you guys but today I just wanted to talk about this particular topic and why it's so important and the shift with regards to business going from a traditional uh, for-profit only model to um, this trend of starting to become more socially conscious. Now, traditionally corporations um, have, typic have typically existed uh, with the sole purpose of providing shareholder value only, which shareholder value only means profit only. So that has kind of been the model for a really long time for a lot of businesses and a lot of corporations uh, where it's profits above everything else. In recent years, there has started to become a shift where um, consumers are starting to change what it is that they want. They want to purchase products and services from companies that are doing more than just providing things. Uh, they want to work with companies that are uh, giving back to the community or treating their employees well or providing additional vacation time uh, for women who are pregnant having a baby or uh, their husbands, you know, whatnot. So there has been this shift, this kind of cultural shift in business, and it is starting to take shape. So, um, you know, I read a lot of articles and things like that, keep myself abreast of what's going on out there. And uh, there's a lot of Fortune 500 companies that are changing uh, what the definition of a corporation is and it's no longer uh, what the traditional definition was which is primarily uh, to create shareholder value only uh, where it's just uh, primarily profit driven so companies are really starting to take those things into considerations good companies good CEOs are listening and paying attention to their employees needs uh, to the consumers needs to uh, what's going on in the world and that's what we're really looking for and I know there's kind of been this, you know, war against corporate America um, and kind of for good reason. You know, I think that uh, there has been a, a, a large level of irresponsibility in a lot of areas. Um, but again, uh, it depends on who's the steward of the business. So good leaders are really important. Uh, there's opportunities for good um, leaders to rise in companies, become CEOs and make better decisions for their companies, for their communities. So. I'm not at that level. <laughs> We're a really small business, um, but I dream big. But with that said, uh, something that I mentioned in, the, in our campaign launch video for One Box Equals One Meal, and if you haven't watched that, uh, link is in my bio, check it out. But um, that's one of the things that I talk about, that if I was going to start a business, for me, it was going to be um, uh, something that had to do with a social give back, helping out my community. And I have spent, um, years working with different nonprofits over the years, working with uh, Mary Shelter on the board of directors in Orange County for many years, and they were a home, um, kind of a transition age home for young girls that had gotten pregnant uh, as a result of being raped or just they were underage and maybe their family kicked them out. So kind of this at-risk demographic, and um, I learned a lot through that process. I also was president of the board of directors for Angel's Nest, uh, TLP, which is a transitional living program for transition age foster youth. And <clears throat> uh, they've since changed up their model a little bit, uh, but they do provide support services, uh, rent stipends and things like that for transition age foster youth in college. And I was president of their board of directors for about four years, really kind of helped um, uh, shape and uh, uh, provide support for the organization and spent a lot of time working with the foster youth and creating a curriculum for life skills training and things like that. And I would go to the residential house uh, every other Friday, almost for six months at one point while we were building out the program and sit with the youth and uh, do these types of trainings on different types of life skills. And sometimes we would bring in people from the community to provide those types of life skills. And this, there's such a need for that sort of thing, especially when it comes to young people. Young people need healthy relationships, healthy adult relationships, a strong support system, access to knowledge and information to help them get on a, a better track to life. Uh, a lot of things that parents might typically provide your kids 
Um, a lot of foster youth, for example, don't get access to that. So that was the type of programs that we would um, offer aside from having an actual house where they would live in. So these types of experiences really shaped kind of who I am and my life choices. <clears throat> I'm a very actively aware person, <laughs> sometimes to my own detriment. Um, it's really hard living and being actively aware of a lot of things um, because it's hard to kind of turn a blind eye once you're really aware. And that was kind of one of the things that once I you know, learned about what happens to at-risk youth um, here, I just couldn't turn a blind eye. So I've always been someone that wanted to get involved in you know, kind of various ways. Um, and I think it's something that's kind of existed within me since I was very young. Um, I remember just being a little girl and I wanted to be a police officer because I wanted to help people. Um, and that was my reasoning behind it. I didn't become a police officer, but you know, as a little kid that, you know, you, you kind of think along those lines. Um, oh, hi. <laughs> you're so cute. And I remember when I was about <clears throat> six years old, I was living in San Diego and we were driving in the car and, um, I know there's a lot of controversy around Michael Jackson, but you know, he's someone that I grew up with and listening to his music and, um, <clears throat> uh, the song man in the mirror had come out and I remember just listening to it on the radio on the way home from the beach with my parents and they weren't paying attention they're just driving but I just was listening to that song and I was listening to the lyrics and I understood the message the message was if you want to create change look at the person in the mirror you know look at the man in the mirror and so I understood that as a six-year-old uh, thinking that well if you want the world to be a better place you have to start with yourself and so so often we get caught up in like oh you know what's going on in the news and oh the world's horrible and oh things need to change and you know we, we get into this kind of cycle but really it's about changing ourselves and starting there and um, and it doesn't mean I'm like perfect or anything like that far very not <laughs> at all I've made my share of mistakes in my life uh, very much so and I do so often um, as, a, as a human, we, we do, we're not perfect. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't think about my actions and my choices in life and who do I wanna be in the world? Who do I wanna be in society? How do I wanna live my life? What am I contributing to this world community, right? So I think about those things. And so um, the first time I started a social impact business, or I tried to, was probably in around 2006, no, 2007, 2008. And, um, I started this little t-shirt company and we would sell t-shirts at different uh, community events. And the whole kind of concept behind that was also uh, uh, to create world peace and um, positive values of, of peace. And a portion of our proceeds were donated to charities um, as, as well. And at that time, that social impact model was not something that really existed. And so when I talked about it, a lot of people kind of people that were older than me or people that had more experience in business kind of um, naysayed me and said you know this isn't gonna work and if you're gonna be a business you have to make money first and um, you know uh, you know why are you gonna do two things it doesn't make sense and all these things and so I thought maybe I'm just kind of crazy and you know maybe this there everybody's right and this isn't gonna work so that coupled with other things um, I ended up kind of stopping I kind of pulled the plug on things and Around that time, I found out, I was driving on Melrose one day in LA, and I saw this store in Melrose that had this big wall of Tom's shoes. And Tom's shoes, if you guys have heard of them, they have a one uh, buy one give back model. So they're essentially one of the first companies, I think might've been the first company that actually did this buy one give one social impact model um, and really essentially kind of tested it out. For the most part, they had been successful for a long time doing it. And one of the things that they had attributed their success to was not putting money aside for a marketing budget and instead using grassroots efforts to raise awareness on their cause and um, do their social give back that way. And so for them, it was you buy a pair of shoes and then they'll donate a pair of shoes to a child in need in a third world country. And it was based on Tom's personal experience going to a third world country and seeing some of these kids that didn't have shoes. Um, and you know, of course, you, know, you don't think about it because for a lot of us, it's accessible, it's normal, it's part of life, it's part of culture, <laughs> it's, everyone has shoes. Um, but going a lot of times to a third world country, 
you'll, you'll see that sort of thing. People don't have some basic necessities. And so he kind of took that and turned it into this, you know, way of creating a business, but having this element where you give back. And so that's kind of the whole premise behind the social impact entrepreneurship business model is it is a for-profit business, but there is a give back element to it. Now, I have worked extensively with nonprofits. Um, I have a lot of nonprofit experience, a lot of board experience, and business operations experience. Um, that's kind of what my professional background is. And one of the things about nonprofits, um, it's, it's a little bit of an outdated model, to be honest with you. Um, it's, it, it can be a little difficult to maintain. You're constantly fundraising and you know things like that. And there's no sustainable stream of revenue. So that becomes a challenge for any business and a nonprofit. And people a lot of times don't understand. They think nonprofits, everything's for free. That's not it at all. Nonprofits run their business the same as anyone else were to run a business, a for-profit business. They're gonna have employees. They're gonna have overhead. They're gonna have payroll expenses. They're gonna, maybe they have a, a car, a vehicle for purposes that they need for their organization. Um, these are all things that cost money. So they need to have money and an operating budget to run those things. So people don't just work at nonprofits for free. Um, uh, the, but the caveat is for a nonprofit to maintain their nonprofit status, which means that they don't pay taxes, okay? That's kind of the, the, the upside to it that the government does is that if you create social programs, we're not going to tax you on, your, what, you know, on the money that you bring in. But the, but the caveat to that is, is that you have to spend all the money um, uh, throughout the year. So if your nonprofit generates, let's say, $100,000, you have to spend it on your program throughout the year. Um, and then once you do, you're going to have a very low net profit, for example, at the end of the year, or maybe none. Um, and then, you know, it, it lowers what you're, what you're paying in taxes and hopefully, and probably you're not going to be paying taxes. So that's kind of the, the, the thing with the nonprofits. Then the other part to it is, is that there's this like little 80, 20 rule that if you are a, a registered nonprofit, um, uh, some nonprofits end up spending a lot of their budget on overhead and little will go towards the programs and so the whole point is is that there's this 80 20 rule that you want a nonprofit to spend only 20 percent of their budget on uh, operating expenses like payroll and admin costs and marketing and things like that and 80 percent is supposed to go towards uh programs so in a perfect world that would be great but if you the reality of nonprofits that 20 percent is so little it is very little to be able to truly run your business effectively or your operation effectively um, it's really difficult to retain employees um, because of such low pay um, it's not competitive so and, and the work is a lot there's a lot of work expected of you um, and the and the pay to the work ratio and the level of stress, it's kind of not worth it. So you end up having a high turnover in nonprofits too. So, uh, you know, I'm not knocking the model. I just think people deserve better. You know, I think employees deserve better. Um, and there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way where people can um, make a better, uh, you know, living and still be able to give towards these great causes. And it's one, it's one of the main reasons why I truly believe in the social impact business model, where you are a for-profit business, but you use your business to do something good in the community. So for me, when I you know, took that step to try again, <laughs> because I told you guys I tried once you know, in 2008, and um, so when I, you know, kind of, when I took that decision to try it again, um, I, I waited, I took some time, I took some time to, you know, um, uh, get more experience, build my confidence up more, and then make the right transition uh, for me at the right time. I wasn't sure when it was going to happen or if, uh, but the time ended up coming. I was in a corporate job and um, doing consulting work, and uh, uh, it kind of got to a point where, you know, I had to make a decision for myself. Am I going to continue this or am I going to pursue a greater passion that I have? And, you know, those aren't easy decisions. Um, you have to have these truthful conversations with yourself. Um, and those are things that I had to. There's, when you start a business, there's a lot of risk involved. Uh, there's a lot of sacrifice involved. Um, you're giving up a lot. 
you know, like I've given up vacations, I've given up going out with my friends, I've given up a lot of things. Uh, you, you know, you're gonna downsize, you're gonna, you know, just your lifestyle is going to be different, especially in those early years. And especially if you're a bootstrapping entrepreneur, which I've been bootstrapping this business, you know? Um, so there's a lot of challenges and things like that involved, but it doesn't, it didn't take away from the fact that um, building it, I really wanted to build this as a social impact company. And so from day one, that's what we've been doing. And so going back to my charity work from before, helping the at-risk youth, that's a cause that I connect with. Um, I come from a single family home and going through just living life and going through different challenges, um, I identify with foster youth. I identify with at-risk youth. Um, there are so many things that I went through in my life that um, uh, were challenging or had hurt me and I had to learn the hard way. Um, so learning about the plight of foster youth and a lot of them go through even worse things than I had gone through. <clears throat> um, but I truly believe that if young people have positive influences in their life, if they have support networks and they have resources, um, they have a chance. And so that's why this is the cause that I'm truly passionate about. Um, and uh, I've decided to use my business um, and build it as a social impact company. So even though we're not this like multi-million dollar company, well, we're, which we're not, um, we sell wholesale our product to about 80 stores uh, throughout California and some stores in Europe. Um, and uh, uh, we also sell our product online and a portion is donated to charities that support foster youth and sex trafficking survivors. And I talk about this demographic a lot. I talk about the link a lot. Um, about uh, the fact that foster youth are really vulnerable to sex traffickers. And um, I gave a TED talk about this or a TEDx talk about this topic, hoping to raise awareness. So why can't I have a business and at the same time raise awareness for something so important um, and do a give back? And we've been doing our give back in a few different various ways over the years. Uh, we've been giving back monetarily. We also have provided um, life skills workshops. Uh, where we'll talk about, you know, different, uh, you know, how to do resumes or how to set goals, um, self-esteem, you know, just these, these really basic things. And sometimes they have never experienced a workshop like that before or information like that. Um, and also just having that opportunity to kind of connect with them. It makes a difference and it's impactful for them. And we gift them a box of quick nails and it just totally lifts their spirits up. And for this particular cause, you know, sometimes people think, well, it's hard for people to understand concepts and new concepts, and I get that. So I'm patient <laughs> because people are starting to understand. And so for us, when we do our social give back, um, you know, if we donate a box of nails to a foster youth or a survivor of sex trafficking, people are like, well, why do they need that? That's not important. They should be focused on education. Of course, they need to be focused on education. And, you know, there's a lot of things that they need support with. Um, but one thing, is that uh, sex traffickers use nail salon services to lure youth um, into sex trafficking. Like they will legit say, hey, let's go get your hair and nails done. Let me you know, buy you lunch. And if you're an at-risk youth, or if you're living in a group home, or if your parents are in jail and you're staying temporarily with a foster parent, you're sad, you're going through self-esteem issues, you're scared, and someone's giving you a little bit of attention, you might go off with them. So, um, the Department of Children and Family Services actually has a line, line item in their budget for nail uh, services. So that, and it says, so that youth don't get this from traffickers. Um, so in a sense, this helps kind of keep them protected and safe. You know what I mean? It's like one little thing that they have. And also, our whole brand is about women empowerment. So a little definition of what a sexy boss babe is is on the side of the box, and it's a breed of woman that's confident from the inside out. She can be curvy, uh, thin, plus size, athletic, tall, short, any size, shape, or color. Her beauty comes from knowing her self-worth and what she deserves. She goes after what she wants in life. She's fierce, bold, and empowered. And to be honest with you, like, I mean this. And this is me, you know? And it took me time to get here. And it's you and it's a lot of other women that, that are struggling in life or that have struggled in the past in their lives in, in, in some ways. And so it, it does, it, it connects with women, it gives them a sense of confidence. Um, and every box comes with a little affirmation, like this box is called Chiefess. Um, in the Native American culture, um, a chiefess is the, a warrior, a female warrior, a female leader of a tribe. And so because our brand is all about women empowerment, 
um, every box has an empowering message behind it. So this was kind of inspired by, by that. Um, so when you wear it, it kind of, if you want to tap into your kind of ultimate like warrior tribe leader power, you put on a box of Sexy Boss Babe Quick Nails and Chief Dis, and it kind of gives you this little affirmation. And so when I wear them, I think like that sometimes. Some days I'll pick out which nails I'm going to wear based on what type of power I need for the day. <laughs> sometimes I need to be fearless. Sometimes I'm going into a meeting where I'm like, oh my God, there's going to be some real big power players in here. I got to up my game. So I'll put fearless on and it's a little reminder, you know, it's a little affirmation reminder and it helps me tap into my inner power. Um, so, so, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of fun like that. And then, you know, again, it's not, the give back is not something that we're just saying. It truly is like on the top of the box here, it says, um, foster youth and human trafficking survivors benefit from this purchase on the side here of this box we tell consumers we educate them just in this one little area um, we give back a portion of every uh, purchase of sexy boss babe nails they're donated to causes that benefit foster youth and human trafficking survivors and why we give back foster youth need our help they are an extremely vulnerable demographic uh, many are not adopted and have no support when they age out of the system. Oftentimes they end up homeless and targeted by human traffickers. And of course, we thank our supporters uh, here. Uh, thank you. You will look fabulous while making an impact and changing the world. Thank you for being a sexy boss, babe. And so that's, you know, that's the whole kind of thing behind it, you know. Um, and uh, um, we do have this great partnership also with Casa of Los Angeles, uh, where we do the give back with the nails. And their um, development director recently reached out to me again, just thanking us for the existing partnership, the fact that they want to continue the partnership. Uh, they want me to meet with their new CEO to kind of just like talk about this and how impactful the nail program is for their youth. Um, just as women, you know, we oftentimes when we get our nails done, we walk out of the salon and it's like this amazing feeling. Um, and so, or, you know, I see a lot of moms nowadays take their little ones to the salon to make them feel special to, you know, so this is a way, one small way of making them feel special. Don't they, de don't they deserve that? They have so little in so many other ways. You know what I mean? They're going through so many challenging times and traumas. So that's kind of our thoughts behind that. Um, and uh, of course, you know, as a social impact entrepreneur, I've got so many dreams and goals of how to build this company, make it bigger, and slowly, slowly, one step at a time, one step at a time, we achieve those goals. Um, so it's exciting to see. And so this year, part of our uh, social impact program uh, we just launched our grassroots um, efforts called the one box equals one meal campaign so anytime someone buys a box of sexy boss babe quick nails we're going to donate one meal to transition age foster youth that's in college uh, so many foster youth that transition out of foster care uh, end up homeless three percent only make it to college and um uh, through this program, we're able to provide some meals to them. So our goal is to provide 700 meals and we need your help. One box of Sexy Boss Babe Quick Nails is $20. Go on our website, sexybossbabe.com. Use the code SBBM21. And that will ensure that your purchase goes towards our uh, one box equals one meal campaign. Uh, so if you buy two boxes, that's two meals. If you buy three boxes, that's three meals. And we're gonna give you a little special gift, a nail grooming kit as a thank you. If you buy four boxes, we're gonna donate four meals. And we're gonna give you an extra special gift, a cute little pair of earrings. So on top of the little nail, nail grooming kit, just as a thank you. Um, so we're looking for supporters. Um, if you're looking to help us out even more, uh, we're, we're still um, adding on volunteers, so would love to have you as a volunteer. If you don't have time for that, buy a couple boxes. Um, it would really help this cause. And if you like the cause, but you're not into nails, or you know, um, maybe you go to the salon to get your nails done, or you're a guy, whatever the case is, uh, you can still support us. Um, w when you put your boxes and nails in the shopping cart uh, at sexybossbabe.com, just type in donate these nails and we will donate it to our program with CASA and when we do our give back to um, the foster youth and sex trafficking survivors. So uh, I just wanted to share kind of like, you know, what it is, what the background is behind all of this and why this cause, this business is so important. Um, and we can't grow without your help, your effort and believing in us and believing in what we're doing. Uh, so if you want to get to know me even more and more about this cause, go to the link on my bio. There are so many different things that I have to share. My TEDx talk, a documentary I made about foster youth called uh, Breaking the Cycle. 
um, and just more about the program and the causes. And there's a link to sign up to be volunteer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this chat today. Um, I will be uh, going on Facebook, do a little chat, and maybe apply a box of quick nails because my nails feel so bare. <laughs> um, but thank you again for taking the time to watch this. And I'll see you guys real soon.